Okay, there we go. So, we are live with our Woman Crush Wednesday for the Sex and Suicide podcast. How is everyone doing this evening? Amazing. Good. I'm here with our Woman Crush. This is Michelle Goldrick. Michelle, say hello. Hello, Do you want to, is that your sorry. phone? Okay. Do you want to turn that? It's okay. 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 I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, whoever's messaging me, stop. <laughs> there you go. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm here with Vinny Chase as well as always. And little Miss Chris is back. Hey. Hey, how you doing? I'm good, thanks. Good. So, no headphones for you? You're good without? I'm okay. Okay, no headphones for our Woman Crush Wednesday. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. That's fine. I can listen to it through here, so. Yeah. Alrighty. So, Michelle, why don't you let us know? I mean, I chose you, obviously, for our Woman Crush Wednesday for a few reasons. Okay. The main reason being, this last little while, I've noticed you've been doing some pretty active Facebook posts. Mm Mm-hmm that have been motivational and inspirational for women and really anyone in general that's, uh, you know, that that has a little bit of insight into your story. So what I want to do this evening is kind of, first of all, why don't you tell us about yourself and what you do for a living? All right. Um, Well, I'm a personal trainer um, and a fitness competitor. Um, I'm a mom. Um, I own my own business. Um, my own personal training business. I'm certified pre and postnatal. Um, so I specialize in uh, after pregnancy, during pregnancy, po- before pregnancy, all women, um, and specializing in uh, regulating hormones and uh, okay. all of that good stuff. So, so it's more or less fitness geared towards helping women. Um, well, yes, yes, all women. Yeah. All women. Okay. Um, however, I do do online programming for men, but okay. I do. Just specialize in women. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's good to know. And just so that people out there, they kind of, they don't know how we know each other. So, uh, how did we meet? Oh, my God. (laughs) Uh, I believe it was at the first fashion show, was it not? It was, the first fashion show. Yeah, the first fashion show. That we did, for charity. Yeah, for charity, yeah. So, I knew you had a good heart at that moment in time. Yeah. Yeah. And then I got the whole story on you. I was like, who is this guy? (laughs) Um, And I was like, oh, this like eyes on the bachelor. <laughs> oh, is that, um, is that what? Is yeah, that what? really. That's what I was like, yeah, you were you were a celebrity. <laughs> you were a celebrity. I was I was a nobody. So I don't um, know about that. And then uh, and then we were in like the second fashion show together and then as well. You were at the Mercedes as the DJ. Um, that's right. You're and then we met actually through Christine. Figali. Um, yeah, formally at uh, Tantrum. Christine Figali, for those who don't know, is an amazing hairstylist and she, she does is. both of us as well. And she's at. And McKenna. And McKenna as yes. well, which is your daughter. Yes. Six years old. Beautiful, by the way. Uh, she's five, yes. But five? Yeah, okay. Yours is six. Like mine is six. I thought you said they were the same age. So. Well, I, yeah. Okay. Close enough. Close, Close enough. enough. Close enough. Close enough. Anyway. Okay. Um, and just, Christine is at Tantrum, which is located at 733 Dundas, or Dundas. 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 Richmond, new location. So anyways, go see Christine. She's great. Um, so we met through her and we, we kind of bumped into each other a few times. Yeah. But, and I knew that you were always this upbeat, positive woman and obviously beautiful inside and out, right? Well, thank you. You're welcome. And it turns out that, uh, you have some pretty incredible history in I, your life. I have tons of history. Okay. So... Why don't we go back to some of the first monumental hurdles that you had to overcome? Uh, oh, Jesus. How much time do we have? <laughs> We've got an hour, and it's all about you. You're the crush of the week. So Ooh. this is about anything that you want to relay to motivate not just women. I mean, it's Women Crush Wednesday, so we're trying to empower women here. But also anything that men could learn. So Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, like uh, I, I've... For anybody who knows me, knows that uh, I've been through uh, an incredible amount of trials and tribulations. Um, And I can't help but go back to thinking about how my mother, my mother used to always say to me, you know, Michelle, if it wasn't for bad luck, you'd have no luck at all. Okay. <laughs> and that's one way to put it. The woman was absolutely right. Sure. Um, so it's, uh, like the biggest, the biggest um, where it started from was uh, obviously back in in two thousand and five, which we just kind of t- 
touched on briefly. Sure. Let's um, go back there and go into a little more detail if we can for the people that are watching. Sure. Absolutely. So um, in 2005, uh, that's where I lost my uh, partner at the time um, to cancer. Okay. Um, I was uh, his main care, one of his main caregivers. Um, what kind of cancer was it? That, that a lymphoma. Had? Lymphoma? Mm-hmm. Okay. And, um, and he actually um, ended up passing away in, in my arms. Um, wow. So that situation really, you know, it, it, was, it was really tough for me to get over. It took a lot of time to really get over it. Um, that, and get past that. Was that a, um, a situation that happened in the hospital or... No. No? So he... It was he at the point home. where you knew that you were going to lose him and it was just that time or... Um, I think a lot of people were in denial that uh, that his situation was as dire as it was. But, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, I just... I To this day, I, I wish that I wasn't the last person that he spoke to out of everybody in his family. So it, it, was, a, it was a really tough period for me and at that point uh, that's where things really um, kind of branched out for years and years uh, in which I, I, I started um, touching in on this year where I was talking a little bit more and being a little more open about um, you know my anxiety issues and things that I've dealt with in the past and how I've kind of overcome that um, but um, at that time um, I was diagnosed with uh, depression, so I was, um, you know, misdiagnosed. Sure, and that happens frequently. It, it does. Yeah. And I was wrongly medicated for the wrong diagnosis, okay. um, which, if you know anything about anxiety and depression, you know, one side of the fence to the other side of the fence, you can't medicate somebody with anxiety with antidepressants. Right. Um, same that you can't, you know, um, you know, medicate somebody with, you know, anxiety medication who's depressed, right? right. Yeah. So it's the absolute yeah. polar, um, you sure. know, uh, situation that you're going to run into. And I've been on both medications, antidepressants and anti-anxiety, so I can relate to you in that sense as well. It was 10 years, so for a whole 10 years I was um, on misdiagnosed and... Um, yeah, on, on the wrong medication. For 10 years. When for did you, when did you realize you had to take things into your own hands? Um, well, uh, was it within the 10 years? It was within the 10 years. Uh, and, and, um, you know, right after he passed away, um, then I went into a really deep, uh, hole. Mm-hmm. Um, so he passed away and you were on the, you were misdiagnosed at that time and yeah. on the wrong medication, Yeah, which probably didn't help matters at all. Definitely not. Okay. Um, so it, it created a, a, a really, really bad situation. Um, and like I was explaining, anybody who knows, you know, if you're wrongly medicated um, to that extent, a lot of really bad things can happen. So I was on every single medication that you possibly mm-hmm. like sure. imagine. And um, it, uh, it took a really uh, terrible turn where at one point I actually almost took my own life, but I... I to this day, have no recollection of that. Really? Wow. I. So, did you make any attempt, or was it just suicidal thoughts? Uh, no, I actually did make an attempt. You did make an attempt? Yeah. Wow. And um, apparently, I had taken uh, between 20 and 25 um, of pills of the antidepressants. And of the wrong medication that yeah. you were on. Really? Yeah, and washed it down with a half a bottle of wine. And if it wasn't for a really good friend of mine that just knew that something wasn't right and she um you know like went halfway across the city to just go directly to where I was at to find me and um yeah if it wasn't for her I don't I wouldn't be sitting here there's no way were you on the phone with her and maybe started sounding funny or yes okay so she realized okay something's fucked up here yeah uh she doesn't sound like herself on the phone yeah and she she was smart enough to go over there, or else you might not be with us, right? That's now. exactly it. Yeah. Thank you, wow. friend. Yeah. 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 Wow. wow. 
Yeah, so well, we're glad you're here. Wait, thank you. Yeah. But uh, to this day, and and you know, the day after when when I came to, and you know, basically what she made me do was uh, she had like she just like stuck a spoon down my throat and had me throw everything up, right? Mm-hmm. So really, um, yeah, wow. and I had wow. zero recollection that I had even done that. But it wasn't until I looked at um, you know the medication that I had the next day and I realized what the I had done. The was pretty much but, gone. Yeah. I, so. Did you have to go to the hospital, or did it kind of really? I, I didn't end up going to the hospital. So she ended up she ended up knowing what to do, and ended up. Yeah, wow, and then thank I. God. Uh, Fuck. Uh, I just slept it off, and yeah. Wow. And she stayed there the whole time, so it could have gone really, really bad, even with her there. But yeah. so, so in, in relation to when you lost your husband, how long after you lost your husband did this happen? Partner. Um, Partner. Probably. Sorry, fiance, right? Yeah, okay. probably Perfect. like uh, about a, half a year, half six a months year. after that, yeah. Okay, so after losing him, you went into this depression, you had a suicide attempt. What happened when you came out of that suicide attempt? Did you feel like you um, had a new life to live, or did you? was everything kind of the same? No, and then at that point, um, you know, part of like my, my actual illness is, uh, it's high functioning anxiety disorder, which wasn't, you know, properly diagnosed for years and years after. But, um, one major, um, you know, uh, thing with, with people with that particular diagnosis is that they really throw themselves into their work. So being high functioning, they're, you know, over functioning. So they Mm, go above and beyond. So that's what I did was I threw myself into a new career where I was working at a corporate level. I was actually working in it as a national manager. um, And I just kept growing up and up and up in the company. And I, anything that I could do, like I, I, I did it like, and it was just mostly just to keep my my brain busy. Sure. Right? Do you have that perfectionist type of outlook on things? Because I know a couple of people who are who sign who sound kind of similar to what you're describing, where it's like they're like really high achievers. Everything has to be a certain way. It's got to be perfect. And well, I don't think I was no? much of a perfectionist, okay. but uh, I was definitely like. I had to strive. So mm, okay. if there was somebody that had a certain goal and that they hit at a, I would always be like, okay, so I'm, I'm going to hit that like 5,000 over. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, the thing with me and, and it should have been picked up a long time ago when I, when I was a kid and it should have been recognized then was, um, I would even do that, like, originally I was an art student, so I'm, like, I ended up in personal training <laughs> completely by accident, <laughs> yeah. but I'm good at it, so yeah, it's good, I'm Sure. Um, but I was actually originally an art student, so, um, uh, and that was it, like, I was always the overachiever, I always mm-hmm. wanted to be the overachiever in, in anything that I'd done, right. um, so when, like, for instance, uh, I don't know if you remember. Do you, did you take OACs? Yeah. I oh, know. my God. Okay, good. I did, <laughs> too. Last year. So, oh, I did too. OACs, you could always take them over and over again, right? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I took They're OAC, the best. Yeah. I took <laughs> OAC art four times. Did you really? I did. Wow. And, uh, and because it was you were satisfied because, with your grade? Yeah, that was it. So, really? I went from like a 96 <laughs> to like a 97 to a 98, wow. and I just kept taking it, right? right? Until I ended yeah, up with a 101. Gosh, oh, wow. Wow. She was like, for the love of God. <laughs> Just go. And did, didn't she just two minutes say that you weren't a perfectionist? Because you were <laughs> right there. Like 96 to 101. My God. I, you know. Okay. Maybe, maybe a little bit. bit. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, crazy. so, and then it was, uh, you know, when they pull you down to, uh, uh, to your high school counselor's office and, you know, like, oh, okay, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? Um, and I had said at that point, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go into fashion design and if I can't compete with the best, I refuse to compete at all. Right. Right. So, um, that was, that was my thing. And, and so they sent me to a private school to apply. That was an international school. Okay. Um, and I had to put like this giant portfolio together and go in front of like this panel of people and explain everything and my, all my designs. And, um, anyways, no, I ended up getting accepted. No medication at this point. No. Really? This was just all, all Michelle? Just- yeah. So okay. that's what I'm saying. Like this should have yeah. been discovered back then that right. there was, right. you know, something right. um, along those lines. So sure. you feel like this is something that you've always kind of... Always. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, always. And uh, like that's the thing. Like I would...